you are additional. I'm the one vice chancellor. And this is my deputy vice chancellor one. I'm very short. And deputy vice chancellor two. Or I'll kill all and name. So I may have lost that say that if you go into your work as the boy in the I mean you can do and I personally put in your prayers more grace, more strength for the work being done with you. We have the service and um, everybody there that is so I spoke with Dr. Lee Keller and I was just sharing within one of our major plans that this one is very, very important to us. It's about the emergency healthcare system in those cells. So, at least a basic first aid box in every hostel, or if not every hostel, as many hostels as can be. So, at least for somewhere like Matthew Mark and John, because they are together, you can just have one station there. As I feel that we go a long way. Right. And I spoke to the DBC too about it. I told to guys reach out to you. It seems to be simple. I think apparently on their own part, they were trying to like create space in every hostel, but then they looked at the feasibility of putting nurses there, employing more staff, and the cost, and just thought, okay, it's not feasible at all. So when I sold the idea of first aid boxes to him, I was like, okay, that's even a more brilliant idea. So I think I'm pushing it. So you first, although Dr. Lege expressed his um, worries about it, okay, um, professionalism in handling yes. the first aid boxes and all that. And I said, okay, I think they can be basic. We are not looking for serious injuries. When it comes to serious injuries, we don't, I don't want to still manage to be in charge of that. Just be it, like, we have had experiences of people being people that are still having bruises and letting the blood, the wound dry up. Day, which I don't think is safe at all. Or a basic one, which is one thing I want to capitalize on having the ailments at least. Remember, an issue I had in my hostel, my roommate was gasping. And for some reason, I think it's in the lab, you know, and the ambulance was not reachable. And to be very, very, so it's like two years in the midnight. Very traumatic experience because I just kept on running and I. Oh, we're going to start. We can't tell that. So like, I think I recommend you to tell people you know, that. We can't tell that. Like, I was looking like I was going to die. I kept on. What are you doing? Like? So I think that would be the bike. The hotel manager has to use his bike. So, but in a situation where there's no bike, what happens? So just the basic ones. I come back from hostel, maybe a lady that is on her. I don't want to scroll now. Period that is having the cramps and the headache. Just something to like ease the headache of past and all the basic things like that. And from what he spoke in yesterday, he ended up buying into the idea and he even spoke about having a training for the hostel managers. So the first thing to do is training. We don't want to do a basic life support for training for CPR and the hostel. So this one, it will be like a fresher the first thing to do training for the hostel people. So we'll look into that and say, but we we'll we'll need to include the, maybe the BSF executive, the devotional leaders, yes. so that we have people, specific people to train 
so that they can be of help, not just to train the host of people. Yeah, that was yeah. for basic life support. So for the training, we need to do the training before we purchase the first thing. Because if we put it there and you don't even understand what we do, it's still there. Then another thing is we do the training, it will help in the sense that they will know their limits. Because even if it is a fruit and you clean it, the next thing is for the person to come to the hospital the next day because of tetanus. You understand? So we will not go and put tetanus injection there for him because he has to be kept in the fridge. He has, he has a cold chain that he has to be maintained. Do you understand? So it's just for them to treat immediately, clean, and then say what's going to the hospital. For the issue of the inhaler, usually students bring their inhaler. One, inhaler is expensive. You cannot just purchase it and keep it there. It will expire. Do you understand? So what we use most of if we have been there, if we use this, all the compound is hidden in the device. There is a machine for it. And that one cannot just, you cannot just put it there, people don't even understand. What to do about it. We don't even encourage students to bring their inhaler and using it on themselves. We have an issue like that with some of the students that their parents bought a inhaler for them to bring to the hospital. It's not safe for you. You have the attack and you are the one that is utilizing yourself. It's not possible. Jealous. So when the parents said they want to bring it, I said, Will the person that had the attack utilize Look at that person. Can that person do anything for herself at that particular point? We need somebody that has the idea. So the training is important. So what we do is that so we like, 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 at this point, it was beyond our uh, control. Because things like that happen every day, classes, chapel, where students just start gasping. And they are trying to give us the But not all the time. That it's in the lab. But no, that is not that it's actually a mistake. You know, this person has made it. Maybe she forgot that in the lab somewhere. And all those things happen. So I think. So it's a good idea. But I think we will rush to the percentage. Thank you.